physically, I would say give my best version physically maybe back home to Africa yeah. and uh, it's, a, it's great, it's a blessing mm. so far. It's been a blessing. <laughs> what were your impressions for Ethiopia before you came here and how has that proven to be true or not true? I didn't expect the villagers to have, the people in the rural areas to have so much pride in their lifestyle, ah. give the shirt off their back, I expect that hospitality, mm -hmm. but at the same time also being comfortable enough without that shirt on their back, you know, mm -hmm. having maybe like a second shirt or their family will give them the shirt once they give their shirt away, you know. Yeah, yeah. I love um, the freedom in my lifestyle. Oh. Uh, I've never experienced something like this before. Mm -hmm. So basically that I can really believe in the mission I'm doing here, mm -hmm. find purpose yeah. without having to, uh, without donors or people having to recognize it or yeah. have to network. So like, okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, my name is Damaris Jenga and welcome to another episode of Buna with Desta. Today I have an amazing guest, but before we get to know more about them, we're gonna cheers to our shy. Today we're drinking shy because we're shooting this in the evening and we're not trying not to sleep. Cheers. Latin Arch. Welcome to the channel. Welcome. I'm happy to have you. Thank you. Tell us who you are. At least introduce for people to know you. Sure. Uh, my name is Jonathan. Uh, I'm from Belgium. Um, mixed, uh, of course, you know, the Euro European mom, uh, African roots uh, from my father, mm -hmm. uh, Caribbean. Um, I'm working in Araba Minch, oh, okay. which is a city here in Ethiopia. Yeah. And I've been here for a little bit more than five and a half months now. Wow, wow. We will get into that. But interesting. So you said you're mixed, right? Yes. So in Africa, you have roots in Africa? Uh, okay. Long story short, my mom is Dutch. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. We immigrated to Belgium. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad is Canadian. Uh, Canadian. Canadian, okay. But has uh, Sephardic Jewish roots uh, from Jamaica. Ah. So basically... Um, I connect that to Africa. Mm -hmm. It's also connected, of course, to the Caribbeans and, you know, Amerindian. But to cut a long story short, I, I definitely uh, see Africa as, just, mm -hmm. yeah, as a main source where I where I come from partially. So that's just keep to keep it easy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you say you're from Belgium, but before we get into that, uh, I saw from your passport you're also born in Amsterdam, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> which is a whole <laughs> different country. Yeah. Uh -huh. How was that? Did you move from Netherlands to...? Uh, yeah, well, my mom did so. Uh, basically, I was produced in the Philippines. <laughs> and, uh, my mom, who is Dutch, I okay. think I said that earlier. <laughs> yeah. My mom, who is Dutch, uh, she then conceived me in uh, Amsterdam, okay. where she's from, from that part of Holland. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, uh, we, I spent most of my childhood, we, we went to uh, Belgium, just over the border, the northern part of Belgium, mm -hmm. Antwerpen. So, uh, yeah, we speak the same language, different dialect. So that's where I was born in Amsterdam, yeah. and that's why uh, I'm Belgian now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. Now that you're Belgium, yes. do you know this fact about Belgium, that uh, Belgium is the 14th richest country in the world? Uh, are you talking about, like, economic wealth? Yeah. Just, like, uh, yeah. how much they... Uh, yeah. I can imagine that, yeah. Yeah, so how comes you left all that economic success to come and enjoy life? Or I, I assume you're enjoying life in Ethiopia. Yeah, to mm. come down to Ethiopia, not even Addis, like to a town down Arba Minch, down yes, south. Yeah. Yes, it's not mm -hmm. even Arba Minch. Um, <clears throat> oh, that's a deep question. Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, I would say um, we're the wealthiest country, but we invest a lot. We're one of the wealthiest, but I know from growing up there that also the Belgium inv invests a lot of their money back into the social system. Okay. So that's why a mother with eight kids, mm -hmm. single mom with seven kids, my sister passed away okay, uh, on this one. But uh, that's why we could go to school for free. We could mm -hmm. do an extracurricular activity like basketball, whatever, boxing, dancing, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, also study. You know, we have one of the best educational systems in the world, especially, yeah, yeah all the way from high school to university. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just for free. Oh. So, wealthiest, but I would say it's, it's quite, they try to spread it as much. Yeah, I think we take pride in being a, quite a social country. Yeah. 
uh, and then why I came uh, here to leave it behind. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I was basically, I left it behind when I was 21. So I've been like the past decade in oh, Southeast okay. Asia. Okay. Yeah, okay. Southeast, that's when you, oh wow. That's years. where I got into agri permaculture, agriculture and such, okay. sustainable farming. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, mostly as a volunteer, then as a coordinator. Uh, long story short. Uh, where did you go? Oof, uh, Give us the details. We want this long story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. well, um, I started in Thailand. Okay. As I said, I was produced in the Philippines. Yeah. So hopefully the story still is not too complicated. No, not My yet. dad decided to stay in Southeast Asia. Uh. Ended up in Thailand. Uh, I hope I'm not giving out too much personal information to <laughs> anybody, but I'm also okay. just answering your questions. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I stayed there for the last now 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's why I went to Asia, you know. My mm -hmm. dad didn't come with us to, to Belgium, yeah. right? So yeah. I wanted to get to know him better, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Wow. And uh, that was during the time that, um, yeah, I was a, just started university. That was kind of like a moment where I said, like, I need, feel I need to, you know, find out more about him and that stuff. Mm -hmm. And basically, I started in Thailand. Yeah. Uh, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. I would say almost every Southeast Asian country except for Brunei. Yeah. Oh. And uh, I don't think Borneo is a country. I think Borneo is a state of uh, Indonesia. So, but I spend most of my time uh, in East Timor and uh, also in Myanmar. Oh, that was my last. No, no, no. No, there uh, you were working. Yeah, well, in Timor, I started as a volunteer in 2011. Yeah. But uh, I ended up well, coordinating with my brother Fernando, mm -hmm. uh, soul brother and teacher, uh, oh, okay. when it comes to permaculture. Yeah. So I came there as a volunteer, got very inspired, 2015, came mm -hmm. back, yes. and then had a more of a coordinator role. Mm -hmm. But of course, you're always a volunteer and a student. So yeah, just uh, I just had a lot more responsibility, I guess, but, but still. And then, uh, yeah, I was working. Then I uh, had a child with my former with my ex-wife okay. um, and the vi it was quite rural roots in Timor I would say like where I was in East Timor was less developed than where I am uh, I'm gonna keep the village secret I'm not telling my village you really okay. know too much, no, no, you really know too much. my father's were about stuff well, somewhere in near Arva Minch okay? your story is interesting now though, after yeah. Arva Minch is done <laughs> <laughs> but uh but basically yeah, we're, yeah so where was I? Uh, uh, after Before the I got kid? paranoid. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you were talking about uh, you had a kid with your ex. Yes, exactly. Oh. So, a uh, beautiful daughter. Yes. Um, and basically, the village life in Timor was a mm -hmm. lot less developed than the village life uh, that I live in Arbor near Arba well. Minch. Yeah. Um, so, it was basically just a choice, you know. Also, I would say, not to get too much into like the gender role and stuff, but. I would say like, yeah, it's a bit tough growing up as a woman in the village, even though, you know, you're respected by the community and it's just, uh, and also hospital wise and these things. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like me putting a little bit of water with the wine yeah. uh, and deciding to change the village farming lifestyle for be being an English teacher. Mm -hmm. So we moved to Myanmar. Mm -hmm. I uh, had my CELTA uh, certificate, CELTA degree uh, for teaching English, yeah. and uh, I used that to teach in a private language center, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually, uh, yeah, I'll so stop So how there. does Ethiopia <laughs> come to the picture, or let's say Africa, is this the only African country you've been to? Yes, oh, okay. yes, and I, and I feel that I'm connected to it through my uh, Safari <laughs> Jewish roots, so oh, okay. it's, it's incredible. Uh -huh. Um, but at the same time, like we were talking earlier, yeah. I hope I don't offend anybody, but like if we're going to talk about like myself and get into details, mm -hmm. like I, I say that's God, I would say that's a mission. The mission brought me here, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily to live roots and without a lot of money and like s s rural sustainable life, but just more to take the step to come to Africa. Yeah. Um, a lot has happened in between, I don't want to get too much into details, okay. basically, uh, after seeing my daughter for two months, mm -hmm. uh, it became very clear that, um, yeah, I had to make a, a choice else that I would have chosen normally, mm -hmm. which was to be more in her life yeah. and uh, then maybe sacrifice a bit like I did in Burma and go more for the city life and teaching English there and that, that kind of trip. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I won't get into the details of the other side, yeah. but basically it didn't work out. Out of nowhere, I had a, an email from my former uh, teacher and brother Fernando, yeah. uh, he's still in East Timor, mm -hmm. he didn't have time to do this mission because uh, he's what I'm doing in 
in Arba Minch, he's doing in East Timor in Baukau, okay. coordinating the farm and you know making doing all this stuff with the limited amount of workers. Okay. So basically, I I chose to do that. It made sense. So that's mm -hmm. why I came uh, here mm -hmm. to um, go out with a bang. Oh. Like now, I have nothing more to lose in life. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like the most precious thing closest to me DNA wise was uh, my is my daughter still. Yeah. So um, yeah, no more games anymore. I'm mm -hmm. 33. Life is short. Um, there's I believe there's more after this life, but I st I'm still young. I'm in my prime, and I wanna I wanna be of service. Yeah, and maximize this this season also. This season, like you said, exactly yeah. where kind of you can bear fruits. You know, like basically Southeast Asia was I would say like a soft kind of preparation for Africa. I wouldn't say for the extremes, but more mm -hmm. like. A, I got to make mistakes there. Can you imagine when you're first teaching grammar, uh, even though you're qualified, but then the questions the students ask you, they'll, oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, why is it like that? And then basically that, also with permaculture, yeah. led it now that I can basically, led to the fact that I can now basically, I would say give my best version physically, maybe back home to Africa. Yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's great, it's a blessing mm. so far. It's been a blessing. <laughs> what were your impressions for Ethiopia before you came here and how has that proven to be true or not true? Well, I've always linked it to be very biblical. Oh, okay. Um, wise men, the stars, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, not I didn't, having no idea what that would feel like or what that, uh, what that would look like. Yeah. But when I came here, mm -hmm. it, I, it was a lot more green, a lot greener than uh, I expected it to be, especially in Arba Minch, by yeah. the lakes. Yeah. Um, a lot less, uh, I would say, suffering. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, it's situational and also related to the time and to maybe the area you are, but yeah. I would say where I am, at mm -hmm. least in the, the Gamo Gofa zone, yeah. um, in the villages people have food, okay. they have a shelter, yeah. and they have water that uh, is probably quite safe to drink uh, based on their immunity. So mm -hmm. you see, you live in Addis. Uh, yeah. Many people don't have don't that luxury, like many, yeah. many people, like the people. most, I would say, even yeah. Hadesha people. So, mm -hmm. and in Arba Minchin, Awasat's getting worse too. These cities are following the trend and mm -hmm. becoming bigger and developing. So yeah. that's, I, that's, I think, yeah, to keep a long story short, like mm -hmm. I, ex I didn't expect the villagers to have, the people in the rural areas to have so much pride in their lifestyle. Ah. Give the shirt off their back, I expected that, because okay. that, that hospitality, mm -hmm. but at the same time also being comfortable enough without that shirt on their back, you know, mm -hmm. having maybe like a second shirt or their family will give them the shirt once they give their shirt away, you know, yeah, yeah. that kind of network. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. How different is life in the city here in Ethiopia compared to the village? I don't know. If you're talking about Addis, I've been here once five and a half months ago when I arrived. Uh, oh, okay. I've been to Awasa. We have some projects there too that mm -hmm. we do with the conservation of the lake. Yeah. But, um, I would say the difference in the city life is that, like I say, the basic needs are not met. Like, there should not be an excuse for certain conditions. Okay, may there be corruption, whatever, there's also corruption in Belgium, but I would say the social network should not have to allow certain suffering that happens mm -hmm. as a norm yeah. with all the resources they have. And I'm not talking about resources they can trade for money, like oil, and that's what I'm talking about. Like the food, the water reserve they have from the Blue Nile, uh, the bananas, the, the everything, everything, just the, the abundance of, of, of cattle. And so that's what I, that shocks me, that difference. And uh, of course, you know, the, the despair and the temptation. Mm -hmm. You know, the temptations are real in the city, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, compared you know, to... You got to get in and get out. Mm -hmm. it's, if true, you're, true. Wow. If so what do you love it. the most about this country, based on your experiences? Okay. Well, first I'll start off by saying I also love the cities. Huh? Like, I don't want to bad talk. This is just oh, yeah. something that, it's something that just, you know, that's, I would say, the biggest extreme I've experienced in, in Ethiopia and also Southeast Asia are the cities. They give yeah. me the most shock. So that's... I but, can uh, contribute towards the city yes, and the village. Do. I have explored the cities as well as the village, not too much uh, maybe compared to you because you're living there sure. and me, I'm living in the city. Mm. And uh, the aspect of... There's more, as much as Ethiopia is a communal country, mm -hmm. but there's still more individualism in the city and more about mm. me also figuring my life and just trying to make things work compared to in the village and there's a lot of 
togetherness and support and mm. as we were talking about it earlier in the village you will have food people will offer you a place to sleep or stuff like this unlike here in the city sure yeah so well we are not bashing either city or village we're sure. just sharing our experiences and what we think about it yeah so what do you love about that's an interesting perspective it's true i've also felt that a bit mm. in my short experience oh, okay. um what do i love about the cities the best no no no. Oh. just ethiopia and your oh, experiences just in ethiopia. yeah i love um the freedom in my lifestyle oh. uh, I've never experienced something like this before. 